Hey everyone, it's October 6th and the forest is looking beautiful right here on my property. It's about peak season. Just two days ago these trees were green. Give it just a couple more days because it's, it's going to rain all weekend. All these leaves are going to be down. In the past week all the ferns here died out, turned yellow, and we haven't had a frost yet. Next week we have a potential almost every night. It's hovering around that mark. Might happen, it might not. And here we got the trickling stream. So many leaves plugging up against the little dam right there. It does sure look beautiful out here. So everyone, today was the last warm day probably of the year. I'm hoping it gets warm again, but the whole forecast will not get above like 50 again. At night it's all cold down in the 30s. But right here I got the firewood all covered up for the winter. Got a big tarp over that section. All good. Right here we got this little wildlife pool. Got the solar panel here which controls the fountain. We're just going to go ahead and leave I think the solar panel out here. They survive the winter. I've done it a couple years in a row. It seems to not have any issue going through the winter. The only thing is maybe I might just want to take them out because in the winter when food gets scarce, animals like to eat the rubber on these. So when you disconnect these here, you want to unplug it here. So in case the solar panel's getting any little bit of sun, you're not burning out the motor here. This little pool here, I'm also going to drain it down all the way so there's not enough water to freeze and actually break it. Even at those low levels, so any creature can get out of here. That's why we always got these little ladders, so anything that falls in might be able to get out. Same thing here. That right there is a little air compressor to add oxygen in the water. That was mainly to help purify the water back when there was like literally a thousand teeny little tadpoles in here. And we got a frog right there. I think a bigger one just jumped in. The cattails are doing good. They spread. Oh, there's two more frogs there. So they'll all be probably going into hibernation this week. They can bounce in and out when we got nights like that with decent days. See the little bit of bubbles coming up there? That is from the little solar air compressor. I want to get all the hoses and things out of here. When they got the grass growing in all summer, they're actually a little bit hard to pull out. They're like tangled. We haven't had a frost yet. The plants are just done for the year. And these are full of seeds. I'm just going to leave them here. Maybe the seeds will drop back down and just happen to grow again next year. This plant was an accident, but it gave me that beautiful zucchini I cooked last week. Here's the oldest frog pond. And look, there's a ton of frogs still in here. Good. And I can tell today in the sun that fountain is still running. That's a moss filter. It helps purify the water. These frogs will all be going into hibernation soon. This requires no attention. We don't have to lower the water because this is freeze proof. It's made to be a pond. And then these fountains I'll probably pull out of here and just clean them up and put them away for the year. Now this stuff needs to be cleaned up, at least the big solar panel. That wire, it's down in the grass. I have pulled it out multiple times so it wouldn't become, see how it's a little tangled? If I left it in there, it would be so buried and hard to get out. This is a solar powered air pump and it's able to power five different air stones. Oh, a giant frog just jumped in. But it's not very sunny out right now, so it's not running. So we'll go ahead and clean that up. You see all the moisture inside there? This whole thing is full of moisture, and if it goes through a hard freeze, it'll probably break. So that's got to be cleaned up for the year. I was told the rhubarb not to eat it the first year because it's trying to gain energy. But now that it's starting to wilt, I think we'll go ahead and eat those couple pieces because it'll be dead in a few days anyways. This tomato plant got one big beef in there. Maybe we'll try grabbing that. Now we likely will not have a deep freeze for many weeks. So these things I'm showing are just preventative so I don't have to do it later on. I always leave these watering cans here so they don't bake in the sun, but also so they're not freezing cold. I use these for watering my pepper plants. So this well here gets used all the time, except when it rains out. It was a pretty rainy year. We haven't had to use it a lot. Let's give it one more flush, get any debris out of it. Now these manual pumps 
have what you call a weep hole. What that means is, if I go walk away, this water is eventually supposed to drain after a while. It did when I first got it, but because the top of it here is open all the time, something probably plugged it, so now it takes quite a bit longer. We flushed it. Like I said, there won't be a deep freeze that would freeze the water and crack the thing for a while. So I'll just put a bucket over the top. Everything can evaporate or go down the weep hole over the course of the next few weeks. And then in the spring, when we want to reopen it, you go in there in the handle, you could pump it all day and you're never going to get water out of there. You got to pour a little bit of water in the back. The rubber diaphragm will swell for good compression, then it'll start working. Our water table is actually pretty low right now. All summer long, there was water sitting around this. It's just a couple inches below the ground. It actually hasn't rained in about two weeks for the first time all year. It was nice to have some dry weather. Finally got some things done, but this weekend is going to be rainy again. My huge raspberry patch is now starting to die off. It's going to turn bright red probably as soon as the first fr frost hits it. Yeah. So these were bell peppers. We got a few. They're tiny, but they're not going to develop in time. Over here... Uh, look, we got a couple. I might actually be able to eat that, right? Like one little bite out of them. Got a couple. Yeah, that, that'll actually taste good. It's just tiny. Yeah, we'll pick those next week or whenever the frost kills the plant. These are those watering cans I just grabbed from over there. The hot peppers. Oh, wow, we actually got a couple. Wow, I didn't think we were going to get some. There's actually some on there. These plants, keep in mind, a month ago looked like seedlings that just sprouted. They were very stunted by the cold, wet weather. It just started getting warm like a month ago. This was one of the coolest years we ever had. I wonder if the wildfire smoke had anything to do with that. Because this was the first year ever where every single day was overcast. So all those watering cans right back there, we will put those away so they don't freeze and crack. And here's a weird watering can that's always just randomly been out here. See on the ground? I guess this time of year, animals are not interested in these gross pellets that are like rabbit food. This was goat dewormer I found on a discount shelf a while back. But I looked it up and other creatures could eat it safely, like deer and stuff. I thought sprinkling it around may help whatever eats it, but obviously it's just going to rot now. Nothing wanted it. And the humidity made it swell up a little bit. And the rain will take it away. I made a camping video here last week. And the area looks completely different in just five days. It looks so open and bare now. So many trees, lost leaves. This tree above us, the big white pine tree, is now dropping down all its beautiful pine cones. It hasn't made pine cones in a couple years because of lack of water. This year's been rainy. It did really good. And look, it just blanketed the whole ground in pine needles. None of these pine needles were here last week. We were cooking with that grate. Left a good solid layer. I guess this week it would have been a messy camp because oftentimes these needles dropping are covered in sap on the ends. Down the trail, everything is blanketed in leaves. Not, not a single one of these leaves was down last week. And it just looks so nice. Everything's very open too. This little pond here is going to have to be winterized. Got the trail camera there. This pond might crack and freeze. It's not made to be a pond. It's an animal trough for them to drink out of. But I, I do think it's durable enough to not crack. But as a precaution, we will lower it down enough where the cattail bulbs and things don't die. But it won't be able to freeze. And it's got the screens going in the water so anything can climb out. And we got this little sprinkler head in there we might want to disconnect. Last year it was so dry, I thought this the biggest tree on the property was a goner because the top of it broke off. But the remaining branches still look like they're doing good. If we had a couple more rainy years, it could regain enough canopy to survive indefinitely. I've seen it done before. And this tree, unfortunately, fell over last year, the second biggest tree in the yard. Actually, more like three years ago. I grabbed a couple sunflowers out of the garden. These we can let dry out and we could replant them. I could eat them or I could give it to a squirrel. I waited on some of them too long. The other sunflowers in the garden started growing mold in there, so I just left them. Something will eat them throughout the winter when they get desperately hungry. 
So here in the garden, everything's still doing good. We have not had a frost yet, but something killed off a lot of the tomato plants. Maybe it just got a little too cold for them. So tonight I'm gonna pull out all the rest of my carrots and we're gonna cook them up in the morning. Right here, we have a lot of tomatoes. I should go in here and eat a lot of them. A lot of green ones too, which might still turn. I'm gonna try to save this garden like a lot of you guys said in the comments, the sprinkler timer during these days with a possible frost. This is gonna come on first thing in the morning and people say if I spray it down even with frost before the sun hits it, it might survive. And look at that, that's a good head of broccoli. We gotta eat that one. Got a lot of marigolds. I'm gonna wait until the first big frost kills them off and when they become crunchy from drying out being dead, I'm gonna take all their seeds. Oh wow, look, got some more good eating broccoli right there. It hasn't flowered yet. The hummingbirds love these flowers. They keep coming over. Are we lucky enough to have another zucchini for the year? I don't think we'll get another good one. Big beef tomatoes mostly are rotting, but I learned the other day, these green ones, they are so good in a frying pan. Just slice them up and fry them. They were very good. Just frying pan with a little bit of butter. The corn, I don't think it'll be able to reach maturity. These are still very small, but it's actually very good when they're like medium size. You just chop it up and you eat the whole cob. It tastes really good because it hasn't become hard enough for you wouldn't be able to eat it. See, a lot of this corn I'm probably gonna actually, I'll probably pick half of the crop tonight. And look at that, it's a dead fly right there. Here's the rest of the sunflowers. If we look up inside here, see? That's a lot of mold growing in there. Here's a better example. Look at all the mold. Yeah, you don't want that. If I bang this, I bet it would make a little cloud from that. Right here, here's more tomatoes. See, these ones I should pick that are good. These ones are rotten. Oh, wow, there's fruit flies all over me that are eating this. It actually smells in here from all the rotten ones. But you see the top, it kind of looks like a frost hit, but I think it's more of a fungus or something because it is just a little isolated area of them. Almost every leaf in the tree above the garden's down. As soon as all the leaves are down, I will mow the yard one more time just to mulch it. I don't bag it, I don't blow it into the woods. I just grind it up and this little granules it leaves behind become great fertilizer for the lawn next year. Look how green the lawn is. There's barely any weeds either. I don't fertilize it, I don't do anything. It just is doing very well for some reason. So here's another hand well. I gotta winterize it for the year. Before I winterize it, I'm gonna quickly go drain all those watering cans, which I barely even needed this year because we got all natural rain. Didn't really have to water anything, so we'll dump all those out so they don't freeze. Then we'll probably just leave them on the ground behind it, clean them out in the spring to use them again. I wanna clean out the drinking bowl I got for the animals before we put the cap back on that. And that's also got a little ladder so things can get out. That was nasty, rusty water that was in the top because it hasn't been used in a bit.
Okay, I was going pretty fast, but that only took seven minutes. Look at all the carrots we got out of here. A ton of them. This is maybe two-thirds of what was in there. Some of them I just left behind because here's an example. See that? Something like a mouse. I don't know what else would eat this. Maybe a vole was chewing these. Some of them also, you pull them out of the ground and they're chewed. Something chewed them from underground, so maybe a vole, because they make tunnels. Throw that out. Most of them are good. Once I clean them up in the house and we cut them up before we cook them, if there's any chew marks, I'll just cut those sections out. Got a good amount of carrots. Just got out a bunch of corn, the little bit of broccoli that was done. The electric fence, we'll leave it on for a little bit more, but once I harvest everything in here again, probably next week, we'll go ahead, shut it off, leave it out here for a few days to get to a full charge, then we'll put it in storage with a full battery in the house. These trees here look absolutely beautiful. Just give it another week. There'll be no privacy looking up here to the pallet house we might camp in the pallet house in the middle of the winter once again right now it's became more of an animal feeding station where leftovers are thrown in front of it with the camera I just realized even with the weather getting a little colder the corn is like the only thing around that doesn't look like it's starting to get ready for winter it's the only thing it's kind of funny. Tomorrow morning, supposedly, every mountain around here I can see is going to have white tops. They're getting snow tonight. As soon as it starts to get a little bit colder out, I'll clean up all the hoses. So I'm going to cook this turkey tomorrow with the corn and the carrots and all the potatoes we pulled out of the ground last week. This stuff is right here is really good. I've never seen those flavors before yesterday. Look how shiny they look now that they're cleaned off. So I would say maybe at least a third of them have some sort of chew mark from an animal. Look at that. Ones like this are going to get just thrown out back into the yard. But ones of them that have very minor chew marks, just cut the top off. It's going to get cooked. It took a while for me to wash them because I was trying to like scrape as many of the little roots off as possible. Yeah, see? Another chew mark. That one's probably just going to get thrown out. But a lot of them are good. At least whatever was chewing them had more courtesy than a rabbit. Because at least they were able to keep growing. A rabbit will just eat the greens, killing it underground. But yeah, after we cut off a good amount of this damage, there's still a good amount of food there. And let's cook up some green tomatoes. They taste really good if you fry them up. All right, getting some butter heated up. Real nice. And turn that down a bunch. Now, I realize the ones that are ripe, and this one here, which is almost ripe, still a little bit of green, you actually have to burn it a good amount because it gets so soggy. But these ones crisp up real easy because they're hard like a bell pepper. And when they're done, they come out really, really good. And a little bit of burnt on the edges is actually really good too. Can also throw a 
some broccolis in there. We got all this stuff out of the garden today. We're gonna have a frost soon, so I had to get a bunch out. Even though the corn's not full grown, this, it's soft enough, tender enough, you can eat the cob. You just chop the whole cob up. It's actually really, really delicious. Kind of sounds like one of them's crying. I have it on really low for a while in here. They're just about done, nice and tender. See how the green ones just turns out really nice. Kind of cooks up like a zucchini, but these, you actually have to really burn them for them to come out. So I'm not gonna ever do a ripe one again. But the rest of these and the broccoli, see that? Nice and tender, just from being in here. We'll just throw this one out. I'm gonna go sit down and eat that. And I'll put on another little batch. Now this is cool enough to enjoy. I just added more carrots, baby corn, and some purple potatoes. Our growing season was not enough for corn to grow to its full potential. So all this, like I just opened one I was like this, that's what's in there. But all these are baby corn, basically. And they're small enough that the cob is tender. You can just slice it and eat the entire thing. Hey everyone, it's the next morning and it's about time to put the turkey into the oven and we'll cook these other things like an hour before it's done. Put a bunch of seasoning. What I have right now is garlic. I'm gonna put some on right now and I'll put some on it like an hour before it's done cooking so some pieces won't be so soggy. All right, it's been in here now for exactly three hours. For this amount of weight, it says it should be about five hours in the oven. So now that it's been in here for three, I think it's now time to put a tent over it so it doesn't dry out too much. I'm doing a voiceover because I have a few people over. So right now I'm cutting up the corn, I'm filling up the pots, going to get them heated up. So the bigger corn I'm going to just boil like a corn on the cob because it's too hard to eat the actual cob. But the tiny stuff is like baby corn. You can slice it up, the cob is nice and tender, it can mix it into food. So this stuff, we're just going to cook it later. For now I'm just heating the water up. Got everything going. I just cut up all the carrots. I basically just cut the ends off and I had to cut out some bad sections. You can see some animals were chewing it. Most likely a vole, maybe a mouse, the way it was. There wasn't much underground damage, so it wasn't a mole. If there was underground damage, it could have been a vole. They also love digging too. So there, that's a lot of carrots. I just picked so many carrots today. All right, so we're gonna let this go for a while. We got the potatoes. We got the carrots, probably take a while to cook. This will be for the corn, which we'll put in later because that doesn't take that long. I'm gonna cut up the rest of these just in a couple pieces, put them in foil with butter and seasoning. That'll be good too. We don't need all this. This will get thrown in the yard because things like deer will still eat stuff like that. And we'll make this later on. Got some gravy. This is doing good. It's been in there four and a half hours. About five and a half it'll be done. It's a big turkey. And I also went ahead and cut up a bunch of baby corn potatoes and some garlic put some pepper and butter on them and threw them in there they always come out really good like that got some gravy going got some cranberries out of a can trying to time everything to come out at the same time not that easy but i did a pretty good job and the stovetop stuffing just throw it into the butter and water stir it take the heat off and that's really easy to make i love stuffing so 
the bear or anything outside in the yard is definitely not going to get any of that because that is going to be gone. But there will be a lot of leftovers for whatever animal might be out in the woods. Once I carve the turkey, the remains will go out there tonight. It's probably going to be a raccoon. There's always raccoons around deep in the woods where I leave it. Looks like everything's just about done. And that's going to stay in there at a much higher temperature. I'm rising it up to 500 degrees just to accelerate that one thing that's not done. While the turkey cools down, let that sit for a little bit and then get the carving. Got everything out and it's time to eat. And I'm going to take my plate. That's my first course. I actually ate two plates today. And finally, this stuff is done from the oven. Got to add some of that to my plate now. Alright everyone, so this came out really good. That is so much turkey. I'm still picking off. I'm going to try to pick enough to put on this plate. I'm going to put it in the freezer for another day. And I'll eat that with just gravy or that's good with salt just for sandwiches. Right now, this is the second plate I just made up. I'm just going to wrap it in foil and put it in the fridge so I can have meals the next couple days. Um, I had my grandpa over, and he took home a good amount of the turkey, too. That's a lot of turkey on there. That's a 22-pound turkey. Once I'm done picking this off, the tray, with anything I don't want, we're going to go walk it deep into the woods and leave a camera there. Also, a lot of those carrots I'll give to some animal in the woods. Because carrots, for some reason, make me feel nauseous if I eat too many of them. There's a certain chemical in there that my body doesn't like. I forget what it's called. Uh, what's, there's something else similar to carrots that does it. But carrots are the big thing. And this right here, I'll just put this whole thing in the fridge. Have that another day. Well, that was a good amount of food. All the carrots we grew outside came together pretty nice. Hope today's video was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching, and have a great night. There we go couple meals for the next couple days and I'm not willing to give the corn to the animals yet I might still eat those hey everyone so we just cooked a big Thanksgiving meal and this was a big turkey I just put a whole plate away I actually put away multiple plates of it I just made myself up meals those meals contain every component got some corn back there leftover mashed potatoes and gravy. I just froze a giant plate of it up in the freezer. My grandfather took some home, but that, there's still a good amount on that turkey. I was a big 22 pounder and nobody I know likes the dark meat on the back. So here's all the leftovers, things people didn't want. We're gonna go walk this tray out into the woods with a camera and we're gonna see who likes to eat this. The big pots I just washed right there. And I even had to borrow, this is the giant one we use for maple syrup because I just ran out of pots. I don't have any real big ones. I have an abundance of small soup pots, but not really any big ones. Let's go walk this thing out into the woods. And who knows who will eat it. I haven't seen the bear in a while. It's also getting colder out. We can't put food out legally if we know the bear's there. So we got to use the trail camera footage to make sure. Bear has been not there for 34 days, I think. The raccoon is there every night though, so that'll probably be our customer. And this is like a week's worth of food. Many weeks worth of food for one raccoon. Or a couple coyotes might eat it in a night. We will find out when we get the trail camera footage back in a couple of days. This is very greasy and nasty, so we're gonna dishwash it outside with hot water. Melting all that grease that's all solidified. Wow, that's cleaning up nice with hot water. Ah, rather wash it outside so that grease doesn't go down the drain. I didn't add any soap. That is just pure grease and hot water. Now we're going to add some soap. Going to need a new bottle. Almost out. I'll let that soak for a bit, and then we'll come back and grab it. All right, everyone, it's been, um, let me think, nine days since we cooked that turkey. 
and not the results I was thinking. I was thinking here deep in the woods it would have been gone very fast. But I guess the animals here, they don't like turkey that much. I remember even in the middle of the city, it would be gone in like a day or two by raccoons and skunks tearing it apart. And out here, we got a bigger variety. We got the lynx, the bobcats, the bears, the raccoons, which are the only ones who seem to have come here, also a crow. But we're gonna look at that trail camera. The crow and the raccoons are the only ones I witnessed and I assume nothing like a pack of coyotes came through or a bear because a good amount of it's still there after nine days. Wow, and it's barely rotted. It's that time of year, it's like a refrigerator outside. So that's the reason why there's no maggots and also the reason why it doesn't absolutely stink. It's in the 30s every night, 40s around 50 during the day. So it's kind of like a fridge and yeah. Something ate the carrots. A lot of them are gone. The potatoes are still there. That big lump right there has nothing to do with the meal. That was uh, goat dewormer pellets that I found out could benefit other animals. So we had them and they were going bad. So we put them out here. Nothing ate it. Just bleh, Because it, it's like rabbit food, if you know what that is. It gets wet or moist. It just destroys itself. Got a couple deep freezes in the forecast. Once we get where we're not, it's going to be frozen solid for the rest of the year. We're going to drain that thing down so it doesn't freeze and crack. But animals love that little water hole. It attracts a good amount of things. We're going to go ahead and grab that trail camera, which I'll narrate over it. I guess I'm taking the whole camera in with me. Well, I was going to take the camera anyways, but the whole bracket, I guess. This right here won't come off. This right here is a plastic wing nut over a normal nut. And I try to turn it, the plastic on the metal is stripping out, probably because there's a little bit of rust inside of here. So we'll get back, maybe spray some WD-40 on that. If it doesn't come off, then this will be part of it, I guess. We'll have to take this part every time we do it. Now down this trail, you see there's lots of wide open clearings. It's amazing that they don't have deer. Back here was logged by the looks of it maybe six years ago. They were just logging somewhere up here this year. I could hear their machinery. And now we're approaching, wow, it's so empty this time of year. There's the pallet house. It didn't have this line of sight back in the summer. The pallet house. I also put some leftovers around here since it's closer to the house and we're going to go ahead and pick this trail camera up too and see what kind of animals been here. I bet it's been the same things that have been exploring the turkey. Maybe this is the reason why a lot of them haven't been. But still, I haven't put that much food out that should have distracted them from a whole turkey. Trees are bald now. It's getting ready for winter. Got a few chances of snow in the forecast. So all the time, once I get the trail camera in, whether we were filming animals in the woods with food we put out or just have it on the trails to see what happens, these also do awesome time lapses. You can have it make like a five second clip twice a day for a year and it goes together pretty nice in an editor. Single pictures don't do as well, but a short video every now and then makes it go together so much more smoothly. And then we use a tool like this to get it into the phone where I edit it. So we pull this SD card out, open it up, we'll take its SD card out, and then I use rechargeable um, Energizer batteries in these. I used to use Duracell, but Duracell AA's are actually a little bigger, and they, j they jam, and it's very difficult to get it against the terminals. Energizer works perfect, and this thing will... Run for a year straight if you have it programmed correctly. And here we are at the voiceover. That's me pouring out the dewormer pellets, hoping something would use it, but nothing ever did. And here I am placing the turkey. We left it out there for quite a while. Right now I'm trying to make sure the camera's working. It's got what you call black flash or purple flash. It's very hard to see unless you put your face right up to it. It's good because sometimes normal infrared will scare deer and stuff. And look at that crow got scared away.
It's the only clip of him we'll see for a while. It's mostly going to be raccoons. The raccoons really like that turkey. They're there nearly every single night for the next 10 days. And I'm sure that's who's going to keep showing up until every little bit of it's gone. The raccoons are kind of cute to watch. There's just one now, but there will be a second one showing up in a little bit. The second one has no tail, and that lets me know it's the same one that's been coming around here for like three years. Same exact raccoon. His tail's probably gone because it probably got run over by a car, and he's lucky that he's still living on. It never got severely infected. It kind of makes him look like a tiny little panda bear now. We'll see him in just a couple minutes. So this little trail bridge you see here, I built this a couple years ago because a good portion of the year, it's a very swampy section. And so we don't turn it to mud walking out there or pulling the garden cart bringing back firewood. It would just become a mud hole without the bridge. So I dug out a little trench to concentrate the water in one spot so it wouldn't become too soft for the bridge foundations. Sometimes it floods pretty bad underneath the bridge, but it's rare. This year, most of the year, we had a trickle of water, but it's been dried up for a bit. This raccoon's very paranoid about another animal coming to get his food. You're going to keep seeing him looking out for anything that could be coming by. Got a scratch. So the way a trail camera works is it can't be on all the time. So it's programmed to a certain amount of footage. It shuts off for a certain amount of time before being triggered again. Because, for example, we got this guy here who will sit here for hours at a time eating. And you don't want hours of footage of the same exact thing. It'll burn through the battery or fill up the storage of the camera. So it's, this is now programmed to make a 20 second clip and then shut off for another 30 seconds before triggering back on. But that can be changed down to as low as 5 seconds or it could stay on for 5 minutes. Or it could shut off for an entire hour if you absolutely wanted to make sure you didn't get the same animal again. So that's why the clips seem to cut off abruptly. So it's mostly the raccoon. I think I'm going to time lapse a good portion of this. And here we got the raccoon laying down, relaxing. Look at that. All spread out on the bridge for some reason. I think he's chewing on something potentially. Now he's getting up. Oh, here's the other one. The tailless raccoon is here to start eating now. This one brought his friend. Yeah, see, the other one without the tail. Yeah, this guy's been around the property for years, so it's got to be all healed up now, so he's not, like, infected or anything. And is acting normal and all that. It's good to see. Got to get out there and maybe sweep off that bridge. Maybe next year we should give it a good staining so it doesn't rot away. That bridge was built out of reuse materials when I tore down a porch years ago. We're going to speed this up again because there's a lot of footage of these guys eating at night. Uh, I didn't get the time lapse for long. The raccoons are doing something cute again. This one's up here on top of the hill, washing his hands off in the pond. It's really cute how they use that for washing up. That, that was a great idea. So that right there is a tub. The reason I didn't sink it into the ground, bury it like a pond, is because in case it froze and cracked, I wanted it to be easy to get rid of and replace. 
So you got those two hills on each side. There's fill underneath it like old rotten lumber. I put dirt over it and grass seed. It came together perfect. Now that pool can be removed if it happened to crack, but I do plan on draining it back to prevent that in the winter. But it attracts a lot of animals. The main intention of it was the tree frogs. This little bridge is a swampy area that the tree frogs often lay their eggs in. Then it dries up and they all die. So this was to encourage them to hopefully lay the eggs in there, or I could manually move the eggs in there, but it was never needed in this situation. If you guys have ever seen my frog videos, we relocate thousands of eggs every year from the highway's drainage ditch. That was kind of cool to see a coyote, but he had zero interest at all in this because if he would have if he would have been over there, that camera would have got him munching on it. But nope, just came over, maybe attracted by the snow. Maybe he smelled the raccoons. Later on in this video, you're going to see something weird with a coyote and a raccoon running away after a howling noise, and the raccoon was screaming after that. But you guys will see that in a few minutes, so I wonder what's going on with that clip, but it was weird. But now we got a crow here that's going to pick away at it for quite a while. A crow really likes this. And a crow is a scavenger. Even if this thing was rotten and covered in maggots, it would probably still be there eating it. That's what they do. They'll eat just about anything you throw out for them. And I think this is technically a raven. I think a crow is actually smaller. So this part I sped up to 20 times because that crow is there for a long time pecking away at it and the raccoon is here for the longest time ever. The raccoon spends like a good portion of the night here on this bridge picking away at the turkey every single night. You see he keeps coming over for a little drinks of water, keeps coming over to go ahead and wash his hands off, loves that pool of water. Look at him back and forth and oh there's the other raccoon now. Eat him all over the ground. So this is the guy who's eating the carrots. The tailless raccoon loves those carrots so much. And now I am done with the time lapse. Look at this. There's a tiny little red squirrel right there. Looks so tiny compared to the other guys. Underneath the bridge. And about to run away. Yep. That is a very small squirrel. I don't even think it's full grown. Tiny little thing. Taken off. And the crow is back. Look at it. He's got like a whole bone he just flew off with. Look at that. Wow, he even made the leaves blow around with that powerful lift off. And I'm also going to speed up the rest of this camera's footage up to about 20 times. Because this video would have been like two hours of the same thing. A raccoon eating from a good distance. So now we just got the raccoon here. You see he keeps moving it around, keeps going up on the hill, washing his hands off. He's a very neat eater. Raccoons are very neat. They're constantly washing their hands and going to take little drinks. The raccoons are better than... Yeah, and you see I keep going out there almost every day, moving the turkey back into frame because they keep kind of hiding it under their bridge. But every other time I have ever put a Thanksgiving turkey outside, it's spotless like in a couple days. That pan would have been licked clean. There's just not enough animals. It's just the two raccoons and the crow. It's like a whole week's worth of food for them. Now, we're done with this camera. We're going to go over to the pallet house. Listen carefully. What do you think is happening? There's a loud screaming. Is that coming from the raccoon? And it's followed by a weird howling noise. But first, a cute squirrel. And I still don't know what happened in that clip. The raccoon was obviously not in front of the camera when that happened. It would have been on camera. And I think the raccoon just ran by so fast, the camera didn't have time to trigger until it was almost out of frame. And the raccoon was letting out a huge scream, maybe running away from that coyote. 
but the coyote never ran by the camera, so that's kind of weird. I still wonder what happened in that clip right there. So now, this right here is a, a pallet house. We built this thing for a camping video back in the summertime. We had a good time camping in it. It's got a metal roof, and it's very steep, so it may hold up to winter. The only thing I think might happen is the snow will pile up on the ground and eventually can't slide off the roof, and it may crush, but... If I'm around, I will shovel it out and make sure this thing stays up. It's a good feeding area for the animals. This is where I throw leftovers. I hate throwing out leftovers. At least something gets to eat the scraps I don't eat, and I bring them out here. The only thing is, if these cameras are picking up a bear, we stop feeding until the bear hasn't been around for a couple weeks. And it seems to work great. This summer, we had a bear on the camera, but once we stopped feeding it, it was gone for a good couple weeks. Even now, the bear should still be out. Notice the temperature. Bears don't go into hibernation until it's usually constantly below 40 degrees. But the bear wasn't around. That was a good thing. We don't want the bear becoming friendly. So we don't feed him when the bear's around. But look, it's the same raccoons. If you hear that, that's a bug zapper in the room I'm with. Or the room I'm in, there's a bug zapper. Helps a lot with fruit flies and ladybug infestations. That bag I just dumped out with them. I'm not sure exactly what was in that. I don't remember. Not exactly sure what we had in that bag. But this footage wasn't that long ago. Well, it's been 10 days. I'm recording this voiceover on the 20th. Now, these raccoons are pretty cute. I think I'm going to speed this up too because it's just a bunch of them. And I will put the entire video of the pallet house, them eating at it, on my second channel. Post 10 vlogs and extras with the original sound and without the voice. Alright everyone, we're going at about 10 times speed. That right there you saw me dump out was the turkey neck and giblets. I don't make it into gravy or anything. I just usually give it to the animals. So that means all that other footage at the pallet house was before we even made the turkey. This camera's been going a while. So the raccoons, they walk around this thing every single night inside it. Make sure the coast is clear so they feel more safe being out here eating. It's kind of cool. They're interesting animals. And there's some jelly. The animals love licking the jelly out of that jar. Look at that. Look at him sticking his hand in there to get it out. That's kind of funny. Look at that. So I figured the jar is too small for the raccoon to get their head stuck, and the squirrel is too small to even... Yeah. So I hope today's video was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.